Hey guys, and welcome back to this video provided by Alabama Science in Motion, where we're going to take a look at how to make graphs in Google Sheets. I'm Jason Cole, the physics specialist working out of Jackson State University. And what I've got for you is one of our first labs that we usually do in the year. It's called Intro to Graphing. And pretty simple lab. We gather circumference and diameter data for round objects. And then we do a graph of circumference versus diameter. And so what I usually do is kind of like what you see here with the class. I'll group one, group two, group three. If I have eight groups, then I'll have eight groups listed out here. And then what I'll do is I'll share this document with my class, put it on the projector or TV at the front of the classroom. And what it allows me to do is this. As the students gather their data, it allows them to enter it in and you can from any location in the room kind of be supervising the data but also they usually tend to catch their own mistakes say for example this first object 1.57 1.6 1.59 you can see a very consistent pattern there well let's say for example this group had one point or 12.56 in they would be able to probably even before you had to say anything they would probably already notice the error in their data and they would make that correction before you had to do it. So here we've got our data for the lab and now what we're going to do is we're going to insert a graph. Now some people will tell you take the data you want and like try and group that in an X and Y side by side. There's no need to do that. Uh, some people tell you you need to highlight everything that you may want to graph and you know, if you've got simple data sets, that actually really does work. Uh, Google has some things, although typically it kind of seems like it messes up. Guys, here's the easiest thing you can do. Click on an empty cell so that Google doesn't try to read your mind and go insert chart. And now we've got this blank spot. Uh, if you've got data selected, Google will try and read your mind and auto-generate graphs and you usually end up having to undo what Google does. It rarely reads your mind correctly. Sorry, Google, you failed. So usually in science, particularly in physics, we want scatter plot. So I'm going to say scatter plot and now it says, okay, x-axis series series. So for my x-axis, I'm going to select data range and I'm going to, for my x-axis, I'm going to do group one's diameter data. So I just click B up at the top. That gives me everything of group one's diameter. Okay. And now for series, I'm going to select what I want on my y-axis. So same thing, group, I'm going to do group one. And so select group one circumference data is in range, are in the cells G. So I'll select it, and there I've got my data. The only thing I need to do now is I need to kind of clean this up a little. So chart axes, and I do encourage people to do this, otherwise it's kind of hard. Uh, this lab is called Intro to Graphing. So I'm going to title, I'm going to title my graph that, and then for chart subtitle, what is this a graph of? Well, it's circumference uh, in centimeter. I always like my units versus diameter, except for the fact that I misspelled diameter, diameter in centimeters. And so we've got that. And now, and so if you're wondering how you do this, you always put your Y versus, oh, and I can even see I've got a problem. Uh, I intentionally put that mistake in there. How about this? Versus diameter. Now that's better. And for my horizontal, I'm going to say, well, that's diameter. Except I keep misspelling it. My typing is not so great. Centimeters, my vertical axis. Oh, this is going to be beautiful. Here's my circumference. Oh, it knew what I wanted to say. Circumference in centimeter. Thank you very much, Google, for reading my mind correctly that time. And so now I've got this beautiful graph, but there's something missing in it missing in it. I need a ruler. I need a best fit line. So go down to where it says series and underneath series. You can change like your shapes and dots and all that. I just want to do this. I just want to add a trend line. And so there's my best fit line. And now where it says label, I need to use the equation for this line. And there's my equation. And I can actually, I'm going to close off of that. And now we can sit here and take a look at it if we want. 
And so what we've got is y equals mx plus b. So 3.11 is my slope for my graph, and 0 0.348 is my intercept for this graph as well. Uh, as I take a look at, the only thing Google doesn't do compared to, say, like Logger Pro is it does not automatically give you the units for your slope. So you, your students have to be able to go, well, wait a minute, slope is rise over run. So that means my slope is 3.11 centimeters over centimeters. And my intercept is 0 0.348 and that would be y-intercept would have the units of my y-axis, which would be centimeters as well. So it's really not hard to figure out their units. Uh, let's take one more look at that again. So again, I click on empty chart. Google, don't you dare read my mind. So I click on empty cell and then insert chart. Look how fast this is, guys. Insert chart. Ah, oh, it read my mind this time. Scatter plot. Oh, that rascal, it, it still read my mind. I'm going to delete this random series. Go away, because I want to do everything from scratch. So for x-axis, for x-axis, this time let's do the class average diameter. And for my series, let, let's do this. For my series, let's do the class average circumference. Okay, and now we've got it. And we could go through the same thing again where we go through customize add a title to this graph uh, we could also go in do our trend line as well trend line and then label use equation and this is kind of neat so we actually we can kind of see a difference here a little bit between the slope of the class average data and the individual groups uh, data on here uh, if you want to, you could go back and add a zero, zero. You may be wondering, though, about like that series. Let's go back to that again for a second. Edit chart. So what this does under series, let's say you have a common x-axis. You can, you can select multiple sets of data to display on the same graph. Uh, for example, there's a lab we do in physical science called Bouncy Ball. And so in the case of the Bouncy Ball lab, we release balls from a common height and record their bounce heights. And so what's kind of neat here is we release them from the common heights, and now we're able to actually, so here, let's look at this chart so you can kind of see it. Edit, let's go to edit chart so that this way you can see the series. And so see, this is what's neat. Under series, I'm graphing I've got my tennis ball, my racquetball, my golf ball, my ping pong. I can display all those against a common x-axis. And of course, you may also be saying, well, what about if I don't have a common x-axis? Ah, oh, that's cool too. So like, here's a friction lab that I've done before with a class. And so here's the thing. They did friction on uh, two different lab groups here did friction. So they had slightly different normal forces that they recorded. And you may do this. How do you display a common a common set of data, but you don't have matching y axes or x axes? So here's what I've done. Here's my x axis column. And I just split up my series and put those with the proper set of x data. And now I can actually, guys, you could do this for an entire class. You could actually do a lab and you could have every single group display using different colors, their graphs on the same graph for the whole class. And so this might be neat in like our toy car lab or something like that where groups have different speed cars and stuff. The only other thing I could see where you might have to, I might have to sell you on this is, let's do this. Let's go over... What about if you need to linearize? So in the intro to graphing, there's a section where students get, they make a graph of area versus radius. And here you can see I've done that. And if you take a look, uh, I did not put a best fit line on it. Well, here, we'll put a best fit line on it. Uh, let's see, edit chart. And let's go customize, because I want you to learn how to do this. Series, trend line. And you can quickly look at that and be like, oh, that's not a linear line. So let's, let's get rid of that. So how could we linearize this data? 
Well, based on what it looks like, I think I need to square my my radius down here. So let's do something. So we could go up here. Let's create a new column. Let's let's give the title radius square in units of centimeter. And I have to do a caret. That's the only bad thing. Centimeter square. And now let's just try this. Uh, equals that radius in Q3. And what I want to do is square it. Boom. And would you like to all the fill? I sure would, Google. And so now I've got my radius squares. So there's a radius square column. So let's do this. Let's click in an empty cell. Let's go up here, insert chart. Guys, you should be pros at this. Scatter. Uh, it's pre-selected the wrong series for me. So I'm going to remove that random series it picked. So I'm going to go back to x-axis. So for my x-axis, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select that radius square column. For my series, I'm going to select my area column, which is P. Okay, and look at that. I've got this beautiful line. I could go back and, of course, I'd need to add all the little frills. And trend line label it using the equation. I got a slope of 3.18. Add in your stuff and guys, you've got some beautiful graphs, easy to make. You can do all your linearizing and everything else in here very fast. I'll show you the last lab is like uh, the marble lab. And so with the marble lab, I love it because for the same reason, you can do your linear linearizing and you can have all your different graphs displayed, all your data in here. It just makes a really nice way of doing this. So, guys, I'm going to leave it with you, and I hope this helps you get started making your graph in Google Sheets. Bye.